There have been dedicated gods in all fields, like wars, arts, death, oceans, hells, and many more. But you would be astonished to discover that there's also a god of humanity's favorite beverage, wine. This god was a part of the greatest mythology ever, i.e. Greek mythology, and went by the name of Dionysus. So, without wasting time, let's dive right into the story. Dionysus is an Olympian god in Greek mythology, associated with fertility, wine, winemaking, insanity, and celebration. He is the deity of vineyards and grapes, associated with the development and harvest of the fruit, and was one of the most well-liked gods in ancient Greece, because wine played a significant role in their culture and celebrations. His cults were the primary source of religious inspiration for making and drinking wine. According to some tales, he is the child of Zeus, the king of the Olympian gods, and the human Semele, daughter of the Phoenician hero Cadmus of Thebes. And to be fair, his birth story is absurd, as he was a god born not once, but twice. The story started when the princess of Thebes, Semele, once attracted the attention of the king of the Olympian gods when offering a bull as a sacrifice on Zeus's altar. Zeus then pursued and had an affair with the princess. When Semele eventually gave birth to Zeus's son Dionysus, Hera, Zeus's wife, learned of her husband's extramarital relationship. This led to a vengeful and outraged Hera, preparing her retaliation against Semele. Zeus had been visiting Semele while assuming a human shape, because he knew that no mortal could see him in his natural form. Knowing this, Hera disguised herself and befriended Semele, and then the princess confided in her about her affair with Zeus. The goddess then persuaded Semele to see Zeus in his divine form. To do so, she decided to make Zeus swear on the river Styx that he would grant her any wish. When Zeus bowed to Semele out of love, she wished to see him in all his splendor. Zeus, who was devastated, had no choice but to agree. As a result, Semele, being immortal, was reduced to ash just by the divine energy of Zeus's natural form. However, Zeus could pull the unborn Dionysus out of the flames and stitch the child into his thigh, where it grew until it was time for his birth. He was thus born twice and gained immortality from being born from Zeus's thigh. According to some tales, Semele was rescued from the underworld by her son Dionysus and ascended to Olympus where she lived with her son. But that's not the end. According to another tale, Dionysus was the son of Zeus and Persephone, his daughter. Well, she was also his niece and sister-in-law. Dionysus was born as a consequence of Zeus's seduction of Persephone in a cave when he was disguised as a snake. The boy, whom his father loved, could ascend to Zeus's throne and wield lightning bolts despite being just a baby, making him, in many ways, the successor of Zeus. Hera found this intolerable, and out of jealousy, she encouraged the Titans to murder the kid. The Titans ultimately succeeded in completing the assassin with her help, and the young Dionysus was devoured whole. But the turn of fate was such that Athena, the goddess of knowledge in battle, could save the child's heart which she then presented to Zeus. An enraged Zeus struck the Titans with lightning, and they were consumed by fire. This scene made Zeus aware the lynx Hera would go out of jealousy, so he called on his dependable messenger Hermes and gave him the charge of the little Dionysus. Then Hermes gave Dionysus to the Lamides, the river nymphs who were the offspring of the river god Lamos. But Hera wasn't done yet. She made the Lamides insane when they were tending to Dionysus, which caused them to assault the kid. Hermes did manage to save Dionysus, and he was delivered to Inno, the sister of Semele and the mortal queen of Boeotia. From there on, Dionysus was raised by the Mistes, the queen's servants who taught him the mysteries' rites. When Hera learned that the kid was being reared as a female to hide from her gaze, she swore to flood the entire settlement and destroy it. Once more, Hermes came to Dionysus' aid and delivered the kid to the Lydian highlands. Rhea, the Titan queen and mother of Hera, was ultimately given custody to Dionysus, whom she cared for throughout his youth. Another legend claims that Hermes brought the young Dionysus to the Nisa rain nymphs, who cared for him throughout his infancy and childhood. And yet another variation of the narrative, he is brought up on the island of Eubea by his cousin Macris. Yes, we get it, there really are like a million versions, but one thing constant through all of them is the fact that Hera wasn't having a moment of Dionysus' happiness. Over the years, Dionysus grew up, learned how to produce grapes, and was the first to make wine out of them. After that, he toured Asia, teaching mortals the art of creating wine. When he came across Thebes, his motherland, it was being ruled by Pentheus. This ruler had forbidden the ladies of his kingdom from participating in the religious ceremonies of Dionysus and banned his worship at Thebes. This infuriated Dionysus, who used a batchic frenzy spell to send all the ladies of Thebes running to Mount Catharion to participate in a ceremony. Pentheus then managed to capture and imprison Dionysus, but only for a brief time before the latter was miraculously freed from his bonds in prison cell. Dionysus, now seeking revenge, 
disguised himself as a woman and lured Pentheus to spy on the Bachic rituals with all their sexual frenzy. Unable to resist the invitation, Pentheus hid behind a tree and climbed it for a better view. But he got caught, and everyone took him down from the tree, tearing him apart limb from limb. Agave, Pentheus's mother, made the first strike. It wasn't until she regained consciousness that she realized what had transpired. After Thebes, Dionysus went to Athens and met the Athenian hero Icarus. Icarus greeted him and learned winemaking from him. Eager to spread his new art and the kindness of the gods among humanity, Icarus sent the wine to his shepherds. The men consumed the portions at once and hallucinated that they had been poisoned. In this senseless rage, they killed the defenseless Icarus. Realizing their folly upon regaining their senses, they buried him. His daughter, Aragon, and her dog Mira later discovered him there. Driven by grief, Aragon hung herself on the grave of her father. When Dionysus heard what had happened, he punished Athens with famine and illness, rendering all the unmarried women insane and causing them to commit suicide by hanging themselves like Aragon. Dionysus ultimately consented to release his curse when the desperate Athenians contacted Apollo and vowed to commemorate Icarus and Aragon's deaths every year. After Athens, Dionysus then ventured to Naxos, pirates from the Tyrrhenia area of Italy who had promised to take him to Naxos ended up taking him hostage. He was chained to the deck as the pirates planned to torture and sold him as a slave in Asia. This made him furious as he poured creatures and vines into the ship. When lions and panthers began attacking the ship, the panicked pirates leaped from it and turned into dolphins when they went into the sea. One among them was put in the sky as the constellation Delphinus, a warning for sailors to behave. You might have also heard about King Midas, the king who was awarded the Golden Touch. But did you know Dionysus gave him that gift? Dionysus's teacher, Selenus, once vanished after becoming drunk and wandering off and ended up in Phrygia, Midas's realm. Here, he accidentally slipped into a whirlpool and would have died if King Midas hadn't rescued him. Midas recognized Selenus and treated him with respect and kindness, finally delivering him to Dionysus, who had been growing anxious about his teacher. A gratuitous Dionysus granted Midas a wish to reward his kind act. Midas asked for an ability that anything he touched may turn to gold. Dionysus consented, and an overjoyed Midas was quick to test his newly gotten power. After returning home in joy, he sent his servants to set up a feast, only to discover that everything of his food and drink had been transformed into gold. Midas finally understood the results of his mistake and greed when he held his daughter, and she transformed into gold. So eventually, he begged Dionysus in a desperate and remorseful prayer to save him from starvation. The god listened to him in his prayers, and the curse was lifted after Midas washed his hands in the river Pactolus. Dionysus was the last and twelfth Olympian, but some believe it was the goddess Hestia. All in all, though, Dionysus wasn't as revered as the other Greek gods. The god of wine did have a fair share of contributions and stories in the Greek pantheon. And this brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed watching it, do smash the like and subscribe button. We'll see you next time with another mythical story. Until then, stay mythically mad.